Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the sacred uh, Paschal Triduum, the three holy days of Holy Thursday, Good Friday, leading to the vigil and the glory of Easter. I want to welcome everyone and thank, thank God we're together this year for the Triduum. So, the readings today for Mass are 824. That's what that is. Our first song was 319. So I have to tell you a couple things about Mass. It's going to be mostly the same Holy Thursday Mass that you would come to any other year. But the one thing that we're not doing this year is the washing of the feet. So I want to talk about that a little bit in the homily. So that's the one difference uh, for this year, but everything else is going to be um, uh, the same as last, as we would ever do in any year. If you look in the back of the church by the statue of St. Francis de Sales, that's where the altar of repose is. That's where Mass is going to conclude. We'll have time for adoration after Mass until about 10 o'clock. I think I'm going to stick around until 10 o'clock and pray. Um, then I think I'll probably go to bed. Close up around 10. So if anyone wants to stay with me until 10 p.m. and pray, we'll do that. Usually there's a couple of people with me at the end. But we want to go up to about 5 or 6. That'd be good. So I'll be in the back there. Yeah, I think that's everything. I'm going to get my vestments on and we'll start Mass and uh, welcome. And tonight is the day we'll remember the institution of the Eucharist and the institution of the priesthood. So, our opening hymn will be 319. We'll start in a few moments. And then lastly, we are going to have a collection. Uh, it will be a collection in service of the poor. We usually make a donation to the food pantry. So whatever you give at this Mass will be for the food pantry in Calvary.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, today we begin the holiest time of the whole year. We hear this phrase so often, Paschal Mystery. We are going to remember it and to live it with Jesus. Tonight we go with him to the upper room where he gives his final gifts to us. The gift of the Eucharist, the gift of the priesthood, and the gift of the command to love like Jesus. Let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord to forgive us with his great mercy. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us give glory to God as we begin the truth. Love, 
Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year, tell the whole community of Israel. On the tenth of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one, and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year-old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month, and then, with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood, and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night, they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat of it, with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand. You shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on the same night I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are, seeing the blood I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord.
first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water in a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet and dry them with a towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus said to him, What I am doing you do not now understand but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has a babe has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean. All over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that, as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
I hope by now, as a Catholic, you know what the word Eucharist means. Do you, do you know what it means, anybody? What does Eucharist mean? Anybody? Clara, do you know? No? Okay. Anybody? Okay, everyone's getting nervous. Okay, I'll stop. Okay. What does it mean? It means thanksgiving. Eucharist means thanksgiving. Tonight, I want to begin by saying I'm grateful and thankful to Almighty God our Father that we are able to gather and to celebrate the sacred triduum, the holy three days of the Lord's Paschal Mystery. Even if only a handful of people would have come today, I still would have been greatly thankful. These last 15 months have been so much for so many of us, and I don't want to focus on the pandemic, but I do want to say that just in the last week I've seen the toll it's really taken on all of us. There's been such a dehumanizing effect to the pandemic, and the question that has come to mind is, how do we keep our humanity when we cannot do the basic gestures of humanity? A hug, a handshake, sitting next to each other at church, just the basic gestures of being a fellow human being. This answer to this question has led me to a place that I would have never have thought of before my answer. And it all began with my Lenten promise to give up YouTube. The fact that I've given up YouTube has led me into so many wonderful things these last 40 days that I intend to continue to keep going after. My little promise of not looking at YouTube or the internet in the evenings at Lent has allowed me to read more, to pray more. It's allowed me to write letters to people that I've been thinking about. It's led me to call my family and friends and speak with them. But it's also led me to my favorite religious programming. It's ultimately led to rediscovering good things that fed my soul when I'm not in the mood to read another book. My Lent ends today and my trip one begins today with Fiddler on the Roof. Remember Fiddler on the Roof? And that musical is answering my question, how do we keep our humanity? For those who don't know, Fiddler on the Roof is one of the most famous Broadway shows that made it to the big screen in 1971. The music is so beautiful and memorable, and it all starts with an opening scene in a song from the main character. The musical is set in rural Russia in a Jewish community in the city of Anatevka. The milkman, Tevya, is the main character and he begins by saying that life is like being a fiddler on the roof, trying to make a living without falling and breaking your neck. Then he asks the important question, and how do we keep our balance not to fall off the roof? He says, that I can tell you with one word, tradition. And everybody can probably knows the song here. Tradition, 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 tradition. Dun, dun, da, 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 da. <laughs> Tevia goes on. Because of our traditions, we've kept our balance for many, many years. Here in Anakotevka, we have traditions for everything. How to eat, how to sleep, even how to wear clothes. And then he goes on to say, for instance, we always keep our heads covered and always wear a prayer shawl. This shows our constant devotion to God. You may ask the question, how did this tradition start? I tell you, I don't know, but it's a tradition. Because of our tradition, everyone knows who he is and what God expects him to do. Tevya, the milkman, has the answer to the question, how do we keep our humanity? It is tradition that keeps our humanity. My brothers and sisters, that's what tonight is all about. It's about tradition. It's about handing on what is most precious 
and taking a step further than Tevye, it's knowing the reason why for our tradition. Tradition literally means the handing on of something precious to the next generation. Now we can understand St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians in a new way. Brothers and sisters, I receive from the Lord what I also hand on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. Tonight we remember and experience again the beginning of the most important Christian tradition, the celebration of the Eucharist. Jesus said, do this in memory of me. We need tradition because as Tevia says, because of our tradition, everyone knows who or, who or she is and what God expects of us. Tradition gives identity and the lack of tradition is making the world less human. It is the loss of tradition, it's the forgetting of tradition. In this last year, we have forgotten more of our tradition of knowing how to relate with one another. Tonight is recovering, rediscovering and celebrating and the offer of thanksgiving to God for our identity in Christ. And the only way we can do that is through tradition. So what does the tradition of the Eucharist teach us? Number one, that we belong to God. We belong to Him. Our fullest identity is found in being a son or a daughter of God. And Jesus saving us from sin and death. This is my body given for you. This is my blood poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Number two, it teaches us that we belong to one another. The Eucharist is the sacrament of communion. We can try in so many ways to find unity with one another, but it always, always fails. Only Jesus can bring us together, and the Eucharist is the great ritual act that brings us together. It brings the scattered people of God, and it makes it into a family. Number three, God is present. Jesus is present, body and blood, soul and divinity. He is here. The candles burn. That red candle that always burns is the great expression of his love for us. He does not leave us behind in this messed up world. He stays with us. He goes with us. He invites us to be with him. And the last tradition of this night is the new commandment. We learn the commandment, love one another as I have loved you. We're given that invitation to love like Jesus, and Jesus only gives us that commandment after he gives the Eucharist, not before, it's after. He knows we can't do it on our own. So he gives himself, and then he gives us the commandment. This is seen in the washing of feet. That is the tradition of the Eucharist. That's what we have received from our ancestors of faith, and that's what we pass on to the next generation. Our next generation needs the Eucharist just as much as we need it. They live in a world that rejects tradition and worships newness all the time. How's that working out, everybody? We need to be rooted, and the Eucharist is the greatest thing to be rooted in. To conclude, I want to make a confession. I have to be honest, I've grown tired of these restrictions that we have to have at Mass. And the Vatican, and along with the Archbishop, gave us the instructions for the Triduum. And when I saw that we were not to do the washing of the feet, I have to admit that I was sad and angry. I love that part of, that, of this Mass. There's such a tender and moving gesture that is done only once a year. I was deeply tempted by the sin of pride and disobedience. We're in Ashen, he's in Dubuque, what's going to happen? He's going to watch the video, probably. <laughs> Thinking that I know better than the Vatican and the Archbishop, but 
As this night came closer, I realized that my disobedience would undo all the gratitude that brought us to this mass. But out of this obedience that is hard for me leads to an opportunity, and this leads me to my assignment that I'm going to give you tonight for Holy Thursday. This is your assignment. Tonight, I invite you to bring the celebration that we have and bring it back to your homes. Tonight, when you get home, wash each other's feet when you get home. Do it as a simple, ritual, act of humility and a desire to love like Jesus. Because ultimately, that's where the Eucharist has to grow the most, is in our homes. It begins here and it has to end in our homes. Jesus, please help us to keep and to pass on this tradition until you come again. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Amen. Let us stand and offer our petitions tonight. For the church, that she will rededicate herself to the life of service and sacrificial self giving. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that on this night, in which the Lord establishes the priesthood, all priests will recommit themselves to living radical holiness and renewed zeal. We pray to the Lord. Lord that the Lord, through the power of the Eucharist, will inspire leaders of nations to seek the common good of all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord For the eradication of the coronavirus from the face of the earth, we pray to the Lord. Lord For all the people of our four parishes, that this night when we remember the great love that Jesus gave us in the Eucharist, the Holy Spirit will deepen bonds of love and friendship among our parishes, let us pray to the Lord. That all people will live with an unshakable awareness of Christ's real presence in the Eucharist and offer their lives to him in friendship, we pray to the Lord. That all those who suffer will find consolation and blessing in their conformity to Christ crucified, we pray to the Lord. For all the faithful departed, and for Martha Bacota, Clarence, and Jerry Omling, and Herb and Florence Schmidt, Shram, we pray to the Lord. God our Father, we thank you for the gift of this night to gather in your, your house of prayer. Fill our hearts and make our hearts temple of prayer and praise to you. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. This time before the preparation of gifts, we have received the holy oils that the Archbishop blessed on Tuesday. Father Mosher uh, brought it to Monona where we had a special mass. I can tell you one funny story about the mass in Monona. There were 10 of us priests in the rectory there in Monona. There was a big, uh, big chapel there in that big house. And we all saw each other. And Monsignor Hawes was there. Father Hawes was there. We got the end of the dinner. By the end of the dinner, we were all giving each other hugs at the end of the meal. So much we were missing each other, so we had to tie them to each other. So we're going to have our, the oils come up. The first oil that's coming up is O I, the oil of the infirm. Christina Tips bringing it up now. And this oil was blessed by Archbishop Jacobs. And it's used for the sacrament of the anointing of the sick. Everyone who receives this oil will be strengthened with the special power of the Holy Spirit. And so we say, thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. The next oil, OS, is the oil of the catechumens, the oil of the holy ones. This oil is used by those who will become Catholic. 
babies for baptism, adults when they become baptized as well. We pray that it strengthens them and keeps them protected from many attacks of the evil one. So we say thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. And the last of the best is the sacred and holy chrism. It's a little different color than the other oils because they put a special perfume, balsam oil, in it. This oil is used for confirmation, for baptism, for ordination of bishops and priests, for the consecration of altars and churches. It smells really good, and I get to smell it when we promise. <laughs> So we say thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Our song for preparation. It's number 483. Grace of the Lord. Our 
Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink through his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with robes and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the name of your glory as without end we are clay. in his 
his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of Your 
Please be seated, we'll go for Holy Communion. To all our next round of churches, uh, we'll go for Communion here. This will be section A. This is 
value of f. The value of price. 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 The body 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 of price. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity. Through Christ our Lord. All right, now we have the sacred procession of the Blessed Sacrament throughout the church. Uh, so at this time, uh, we'll process through the church and we'll end at the uh, statue of St. Francis de Sales there. Everyone is invited to, um, to stay for a little while of prayer, but we'll first uh, kneel at this time. It's going to be 291, this is the Pantia Lingua. 291 is the Ponte Lingua. And this is the most, uh, one of the most sacred songs. It was written by St. Thomas Aquinas. For those that don't know, it was, uh, it won a hymn debate. He was challenged by the Pope with St. Bonaventure to write the best Eucharistic hymn, and St. Thomas Aquinas won. St. Bonaventure's like, uh, I'll get you later. So uh, that's how that is. So we're going to incense the Blessed Sacrament now and process the church. Whenever the Blessed Sacrament goes by you, I was always taught by my mom and dad to always cross myself when the Blessed Sacrament comes by. And if you're standing and the Blessed Sacrament comes by, it's always appropriate to genuflect and make a sign of the cross to show that reverence for the real presence of Jesus. So 
We'll do this now in silence, this incensation, and then we'll begin 291 when we begin the procession. Please join me in singing shorter than one, Andre the Club.